oh, what's that? You got some dynamic content and you need to pull to refresh and get get the latest? <laughs> well, I guess I guess we should get into that, huh? What's up, guys? It's your boy Kilo Loco. And today we're going to be going over some pull to refresh. We're keeping it light because your boy is feeling kind of sick and um, don't have a whole lot of energy. So let's just go ahead and jump right into it. I'm going to show you guys how to implement pull to refresh real quick. All right. So let's just go over the starter project. Um, once again, if you need the starter project, it, uh, the link will be in the description. You just got to sign up for the YouTube course completely free and you can download it. So I got it looking all pretty with, you know, the navigation controller and this is a table view controller, but it will work with a table view inside of a view controller. <laughs> um, it'll work either way, but I'm just making it look pretty like this. And as you can see, pull to refresh isn't implemented yet. And we just got a list of 30 numbers. So, and this is what, the current code looks like don't need any of this but you'll probably have your own stuff implemented so let's just jump right in and figure out how we're gonna do this so it's actually extremely easy to add pull to refresh to your table view now all you really have to do is just access your table view like so and you just say refresh control is equal to guess what UI Re refresh control oh hey look at that super duper easy all right and it's gonna build it's gonna come up and we got it on this nice big beautiful iphone x like so and then we pull and bam look at that it's already working except it's not really working you could barely see it look at that it's all it's all dim and ugly and uh what the hell it's not going away so let's actually figure out how to fix that so what you're gonna want to do create a refresh control out so you don't want to just you know say refresh control and that's it you want to actually get a reference to it so refresh control like that ui refresh control like that and now you got access to it so we could just say refresh control dot tint color baby oh yeah we're gonna make that white make it look real nice right so then we just say refresh control like that and we run it and it's gonna come up on the big beautiful iphone x and we do this and oh would you look at that it's nice and white but hey kilo it's not going away make it go away man i don't want to see it no more all right well let's make it go away now as you can see we're, we're doing all this stuff in the view did load that ain't best practice, man. That ain't best practice. So let's let's try to do somewhat of a best practice. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna actually create it up here and give the entire class access to it. But we're not. It's not because we want to use it in other places because we probably don't. But um, what we want to do is we want to make it lazy, load lazily, just so that uh, it's not create. It's not taking up so much memory instantly when um, when we put it outside of the scope and everything. But I mean, you could still do in the view did load it. It's essentially the same thing at this point, but just watch how your boy does it. So we're just gonna do lazy. And if you guys want a video on lazy, let me know. All right, so as you can see, we're doing exactly the same thing, except we're putting it up here. This is just lazily loading. Um, like I said, if you guys want a video, we could do that. And then um, we're sending it to right here. So right now it'll just do the same thing, but what we wanna do is we want to be able to handle um, what's happening when the refresh is called because if you just do refresh oh and you can't call it um, refresh controller um, because a table view already has that so we'll call it just refresher we'll call it refresher now like I was saying your refresh control isn't gonna just know automatically what you're trying to do with it so what you actually have to do is you have to create a function or you have to have a function in mind that you're gonna call like you know if you're pulling data from your API um, that it needs to know to call that function in order for things to work. So let's go ahead and add a function in here. That's not really going to do anything, but we'll just pretend like it's going to do a request. All right. So we have the request data function, right? Not really going to even do anything, but, and, uh, what we want to do is we want to be able to have the refresh control call this, uh, whenever it actually hits the refresh. So refresh control once again, dot. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add target and we're gonna say self and the action is going to be hash selector and we're gonna just pass in our request data 
request data function. Now this won't work because I didn't put the at objc, so let, make sure you do that on whatever function is going to be called. And then um, for the the UI control event, all you really want to do is just say value changed, like so. So now whenever um, whenever we do pull it and it does start triggering that refresh, what will happen is request data will be called. So let's just go ahead and print something out. Um, we'll just say uh, requesting data and let's go ahead and run that well, that took a little bit longer but okay so now it's gonna pull come up and uh, if this iPhone X ever loads yeah there we go okay so now we pull and requesting data right there like I said it would like I said it was gonna work right so um, there's that well all right yeah so as you can see it's requesting data now, um, as you can see, it's requesting the data, but it's still going. So what we want to do is we actually want to um, access the refresh controller and we want to actually stop it. So depending on how you structure the function that's going to be actually uh, called whenever the refresh control is triggered, um, you'll have to access the refresh controller one of two ways. Either you're going to um, either this function is going to be completely dedicated to the refresh controller, in which case you could pass it as the argument. Or in our case, where we're not accessing the refresh controller, or the yeah the refresh control, um, we have to access it from up here. So all we need to really do to make sure that the little spinner stops is just say refresh dot end refreshing, like so. And we want to say refresh er, like so. And we're gonna go ahead and run that. Alrighty, so here it goes. And when we pull to refresh, we'll actually see we get the ring. But as soon as we let go, it kind of disappears. So that's kind of a problem. Um, what I like to do is I generally like to put um, like a delay on it. And what I'll, what I usually do is just do um, I add a um, I use Grand Central Dispatch to add you know um, a delay on it. So I'm gonna just add that in real quick. All right, so as you can see, um, what I did was I just created a deadline and I used half a second, which is 500 milliseconds, um, as a delay. So now um, what it's going to do is it's going to wait. It's going to use the deadline, which I just created right here, and it's going to wait, um, you know, 500 milliseconds or half a second before it actually calls the end refreshing. This way, we get more of a natural feel for it, and it's it's going to take some time before it actually ends the refreshing. It looks a lot more natural. All right, here we go. So now we pull, we refresh. Well, hold on, that took a, there we go. Well, it's a little bit, it takes, a, it's it's pretty quick, but um, it does look a little bit better. So if we were to increase that, it would look, um, you know, a lot better. You know, we could change it to, you know, 7.7 .7, uh, seconds, you know, 700 milliseconds or whatever. So um, there's that, that's what I like to do. And then the last thing, uh, which you guys are probably, you probably already know, but, when you're requesting data, it's actually going to take a while before that data comes back. So just make sure that you um, you would put this. Not, you wouldn't want to end refreshing right when this function is called. You would actually want to call this um, inside the completion block of your networking request. So just just keep that in mind. Now, there's one last thing that I just want to show you, and that's um, if you are supporting versions like, um, I believe it, it, it was in iOS 9. And if we go over here and we change the deployment target to iOS 9, then what we have uh, implemented becomes a problem over here in our view to load. So if we go ahead and try to run this, we get a build failed. And the reason for that is because the refresh control was not implemented on, um, you know, table views and collection view. Well, it, I don't think it's actually implemented on collection views, but it wasn't implemented on uh, table views until iOS 10. So it needs to be iOS 10 or later in order for you to add it like this. But if you do support, you know, iOS 9 and, um, you know, or, or a later, um, a, a later deployment target, then what you can do is you could just do this first fix right here, which uses the if available. And it's actually the same, almost the same exact thing. So, um, you know, if it's iOS 10 and above, then we'll do it the way that we, we did it right here. But if it's before that, all we have to do is say table view dot add sub view, and then pass in our refresher like that. So this should work on, um, on deployment targets that are um, below iOS 10, um, 
Only thing is that I don't have uh, a simulator to show you guys that, that that it should work. But this is the implementation that you would generally put in for your older deployment targets. But yeah, that's all you really get. That's all you really need to know, guys. Is um, you know, you set up your refresh control. Uh, you you can change the tint like that. You you call you select whatever function it's going to be called right here, and then you add it to your table view. However, however makes sense in your code. Now you could still use this one for you know iOS 10 and iOS 11 and and further, but you know this looks more clean. And then just make sure that you add like a little bit of a delay just so that it looks more natural when it's finished. Because if it comes if that data comes back really quickly, it's just not going to look too great. So. That's all today, uh, guys. Like I said, I don't feel that great, so I wanted to keep it on a short video, even though this was a lot longer than I thought it would be. But yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed it. If you uh, did learn something new, make sure that you give it a thumbs up and you subscribe. A lot of people don't subscribe for, I don't know, whatever reason. If it helped you, then just, you know, help me, you know? I help you, you help me. Hey, subscribe. And that's all. And then, um, you know, if you're interested in, um, you know, having a conversation or you have a question about you know a bug in your code hit me up on twitter that's the best place to communicate with me um comments on youtube definitely aren't and then if you're interested in like some things that i post on instagram then you can follow me on instagram so like i said that's all for today guys um i hope that you guys did learn something new and make sure that you keep coding passionately because your boy kilo loco is still coding passionately even when he's sick so yeah later i'll catch you guys later